If you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter 2. And what a great um, resurrection weekend we had. And uh, we actually had a, close to 100 people in the youth building watching the service there. And, and um, just a great weekend. Hallelujah. We'll get to Hebrews chapter 2 in here in a little bit. And um, this year, you know, came from our founding pastor, Dr. Savell. He's been on the road and started in Arkansas, then Missouri, and ministering this morning. And he gave us a prophetic word um, back in really October and talked about that 2024 would be a year of progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion, and seeing our highest expectation being fulfilled. And, um, and so f- as, a, as a pastor, uh, he's what we would call the apostle of the church. He's like the apostle Paul, and um, I'm the pastor. And, and so I'm like the Timothy of, 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 of Ephesus. Paul started the church of Ephesus, and he handed over to Timothy, and Timothy pastored the church. And so, so Dr. Will comes and brings an overall word for this church body as well as the body of Christ because he travels all over the world. We have offices and churches in South Africa, Australia, Canada, in different places, in England. And, and so we have a wide range of audience of who he ministers to and, and so here at Heritage, as a pastor, what my role is, is to take that word and seek the Lord about how do I shepherd us to receive that word. Amen. 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 And, and, and so with this, so, so as I was praying, you know, towards the, be, the beginning of the year on look, what, what is my part? You always need to pray, what's your part? Yeah. What's your part and, and what God's doing and what, am, what, am I, what do I need to share and so that's what we talked about identity. And we've, we've established that we are, I am a child of God. I am born of God. I am a son of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's nothing I can do to become more righteous. The moment I made Jesus the Lord of my life is as righteous as I'll ever be. And, and so, so when we understand that, then what does it do? It is empowers us to then lay hold of everything that God has for me everything that God has for us. Amen. And so we're gonna continue talking about identity, but I wanna, add, I, wanna, I wanna deal with some things as how does a righteous person live in a world that's gone crazy? All right. You see, the prophetic word that Dr. Svoboda gave us about a year of progressing and advancing, he also gave us some warnings. Yeah. Do you remember what those were? Number one was stay in faith. Number two was remain focused. And the third one is don't be distracted. And so if he says, t- tells us to stay in faith, that means we're gonna have an opportunity to n- get out of faith. If he tells us to remain focused, that means we're gonna have an opportunity to lose our focus. If he tells us not be being distracted by the world around us, then that probably means that we're going to have a temptation to be distracted. Do you ever get distracted? Does the enemy ever try to distract you with things? I mean, think about the world that we're living in. We're inundated with so many things. And, and the things that if we're not careful, what will happen as we, as we live in this world and we're in this world, but we're not of this world, if we spend more time with the world, then what happens is we'll get over into a place that the enemy wants us in that place is living out of fear. Think about all the decisions, you, that think, think of the decisions, all the decisions that you make why do you make them? Did you make decisions because they were God decisions or did you make decisions because they were fear decisions? Let me throw this out for, just for the sake of just provoking thought. Why do you vote for the person you vote for? Why? Because do you, do you vote for this person because, well, I'm afraid if I vote for that person, I'm, af- I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Well, well, because they tell me this about this party, they tell me this about this party, but what does God say in his word about things? 
So what happens, you can live your entire life living out of a certain narrative that God didn't paint in your heart and you make decisions based on fear. And I'm telling you, it's day in and day out. Why do you do what you do? And if you constantly look at the media, you constantly look at the news, you constantly look at everything around us, everything's gonna try to paint you in this picture of, oh man, fear, fear, fear. I I don't wanna go there because of fear. Well, I can't step out and do that because of fear. Well, I don't wanna start a business because what if I fail? I don't wanna wanna go into that place because of fear. I I don't wanna do that because what if this happens and what if that happens? And next thing you know, you're not even in the will of God because fear has kept you idle. Fear. That's why we have to stay in faith and, and remain focused and not be distracted. And, and the biggest thing that's gonna keep us in fear or focus, not focused or distracted is gonna be fear. Well, what do those people think of me? Why did they say that? Next thing you know, you've, you've created all these scenarios about what people think about you and nothing has even happened. Hebrews chapter two. Actually, no, I need to read this. I was watching Dr. Savell back in March and he was ministering in Canada. Canada. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> oh, I can speak clearly. Hallelujah. And he, and he spoke a word to that church and I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I, I just wanna read what, what he had uh something the Lord just wanted me to bring out of this word. And this was on March 11th. He received this word March 11th at 1210 a.m. He said, the Lord began to speak to me two words. And as they came up, I wrote them down. And the two words, resilience and triumph. Because I heard him say, for all of you in whom it has been extremely hard to see yourself overcoming, all that you've been through over the last few months or even years, a new story is about to be told about your life. It will be one of your greatest success stories. You're about to bounce back with a vengeance. And what your adversary has meant for bad, God is about to turn it into something good. Your story, your story will be one of resilience and triumph. The word resilience means to the act of rebounding from insurmountable disadvantages and challenges. The word triumph means to enter into a state of being extremely victorious. It also implies conquest over the adversary, overcoming all opposition, and finally it means the act of regaining that which was lost or taken from you by the adversary. Get ready because you're entering into a time of resilience and triumph. Amen? Do you receive that? Hallelujah. We are resilient and we are triumphant. And I bring that out because that has everything to do with what we're gonna be talking about today concerning not being overcome by fear. And you might like, well, what does this have to do with identity? We'll get there, we'll get there. So Hebrews chapter two, verse 14 He says, insomuch then as the children have, uh, have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For he indeed, he does not give aid to the angels but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Say seed of Abraham. Abraham. Now, what does he tell us? First, he talks about fear, and he talks about that the God of this world said he defeated him, and it said that he dealt with that fear of bondage. You see, fear will put you into bondage. Fear will control you. 
Fear will keep you from stepping out. Jesus says this in Matthew 24, verse 6. He talks about the last days and he says that you will see wars and rumors of wars, nations against nation. But then Jesus says this. He goes, as you see these things, what does he say? Don't be troubled. Meaning don't fear. So anytime we see things in the world, we have to always take it back to the word and saying, I'm not in fear. That doesn't scare me. The fear of bondage really is the fear of death. Every fear is established upon the fear of death. Well, no, you're like, Pastor, well, you know, I have a fear of heights. No, you have a fear of falling and dying. You're like, oh, well, I have a fear of water. No, you have a fear of drowning. Oh, well, I have a fear of flying in the air. No, you have a fear of crashing and dying. You see, it's not, it, no, ultimately it's all about it's all it comes back to death. Every fear is stemmed to stemmed that. Now, it may not be the initial thought, but ultimately it's that one thought that would lead to another thought. Ultimately, it's death. But Jesus dealt with the fear of death. You have to get to a place where you're not afraid to die. Because see, if you're not afraid to die, then you can be obedient to go anywhere where God wants you to go. There was a minister that I would follow and the Savelles would have him come in. Um, his name was Terry Law. And his, the theme of his ministry was no nation is closed if you're not worried about coming back. <laughs> Think about that for a moment. No nation is, because if you're about, well, that's a closed nation. Well, it's not a closed nation if you're not worried about laying your life down to reach a people that haven't been reached. Hallelujah. Thank God for missionaries. Amen. Some of you are like, well, thank God, God I'm called to business. <laughs> but it ultimately comes back to fear, and, and it can hinder you. It can keep you from doing what God's called you to do. Fear. Jesus said, in the world you'll have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome it. I have deprived of its power to harm you. Amen. Amen. Say, I have, no fear. I have no fear. Let's go to Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. We went to this scripture when we talked about that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Thank you, Father. a couple more scriptures and then just laying this foundation here. Isaiah 54, verse 13. says, all your children shall be taught by the Lord. All your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. Verse 14, in righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression for you shall not fear. In righteousness, you shall be established. Get a picture of just taking a stake and just nailing it to the ground and thinking of that, that's being established. Or think of a tree that's dug down deep and it's dug its roots deep. Think of a palm tree that's blowing in the wind on the side of a beach in a hurricane wind and it's bent over. Think about that's how firm you need to be in who you are in Christ Jesus. You need to be so established in who he is and who you are. Because see, it's in righteousness you are established. You see, if I'm established in who he is and who I am, then I'm far from oppression and I shall not fear. Most of the time we will enter into fear because we forgot who he is and who we are. Or we look at our situation bigger than he is. Or we look at ourselves as less than. But when I'm established in righteousness, it says I'll be far from oppression and I shall not fear. Now it doesn't mean things won't attack you. It's just the thing is, thing is it doesn't affect you. It doesn't affect you. We're affected too much. 
by what's happening in the world around us. As you and I, as believers in this hour, we need to be living life at another level. This Christian thing to me isn't this thing that I do on Sunday morning. This is my life. This, the Word of God is my life. And you're like, oh, well, that's easy for you because you're a pastor. It, it, it had to be that way when I wasn't a pastor. This has to become more than a Sunday thing to you and us in this hour. We have to be awake and alert. We have to be aware of what's going on around us and we need to be a voice of righteousness in the earth. But if we don't know who he is and who we are, we'll never be able to stand when the attacks come and fear will overtake us. Jesus said in, in John, uh, John chapter 14, he goes, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Then he deals with really what is the result or what is the answer to a troubled heart? He says, let not your heart be troubled. What's the answer? Believe in God, believe also in me. So the answer to the troubled heart is belief. If your heart is troubled, it's because where you're setting your current belief. See, belief is either, when I talk about belief, I'm not just talking about faith in God. I'm talking about what do you believe in the core of who you are? Belief. What's your belief? If, if you believe this is reality, then that's how you're going to pursue your life. If you believe that this is how the world is and that's what's going to happen in your life, then that's what you believe and it's going to affect your emotions. Yes, sir. But Jesus didn't just say, let not your heart be troubled, believe in the world. No, let not your heart be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. When the woman that came, when the, when the priest came or when the minute guy came, Jairus came and he went to Jesus and said, said, Jesus, my daughter is sick and she's at the point of death. Then the woman with the issue of blood comes by and, 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 and stops him and, and all of a sudden it hinders Jesus from going where Jesus was going. We know the woman gets healed and all of a sudden the people come, the attendants come to Jairus and said, hey, don't bother the master any longer because your daughter's dead. But what does Jesus do? He answers the fear. He answers the fear because Jairus, all of a sudden, he, they, he was dealing with the fear. So Jesus said, Jairus, fear not, only believe. So what, what happened? Jesus answered the emotions that were going on the inside of Jairus. Amen. The answer to whatever you're facing is fear not, only believe. Romans chapter one, verse 16 tells us this. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is not a power, but the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also the Greek. For therein, for therein the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith, leading from faith to faith. And what does it say? The just shall live by faith. So when I understand that I am the righteousness of God, then I have to understand the way I live is I live by faith. Faith is not a movement. Faith is not a denomination. Faith is how we live our lives. Faith is what pleases God, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. This life of faith. So when I identify myself as a person that is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and if you ask me, well, pastor, how does a righteous person live? My answer has to be by faith. By faith. Amen. Galatians 3.11 tells us the just shall live by faith. Who are the just? Those that have been declared righteous. Hebrews 10.38, the just shall live by faith. We are heritage of faith. Amen. 
I know who he is and I know who I am and I'm the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. And how I live my life is I live by faith. You don't need to turn there, but 1 John 5, 4 in the message says, every God begotten person. So we could actually say righteous person, right? Because if I'm born of God, then I've been made the righteous of God, correct? Every God begotten person conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. The person that wins out over the world is the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. Say this after me. My faith faith is a conquering power. power. My faith faith is a spiritual force. force. And it brings success success in my life. life. And it will cause me me to fulfill fulfill the assignment assignment on my life. Can you give him praise? Faith. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. And before we read this, And Jesus, well, Mark, in the Gospel of Mark, Mark's writing for us and communicates to us how do we operate when we have challenges or difficulties. And Jesus is telling, he's writing down the words of Jesus. And so Jesus tells them this in Mark eleven twenty two. 22. He says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Having faith in God is not having faith in a concept. It's not even having faith in an idea. Ultimately, even though we're believing for a certain result, I'm not having faith in the result. Jesus said, have faith in God. So often when we're going through things, we're placing our total focus on an understanding on an outcome instead of focusing on the one that brings the outcome. I learned from Dr. Savell many years ago and he said, he, he would talk about this and he'd say, he'd talk about believing for finances and believing for certain things and needing these things or needing those things. What I learned from him, he said this, he said, He goes, so many people are seeking God's hands when we should be seeking his face. See, so often we want things, but the thing is we have to come to a place where we are seeking him. We're having faith in God. It's like having faith in healing, but not really putting your faith in the healer. And so when your faith isn't on him as a person, then when it doesn't happen, you get disappointed. And all of a sudden you blame God for it. But we have to put our entire affection and all that we are on him. We have to come to a place where, for lack of a better analogy of, 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 for like a poker illustration is we have to go all in. It's like all my chips are on the table and I'm not putting my faith in anything else but him. He is my answer. He is everything that I have need of. My faith is in God. I'm pursuing him. I'm not pursuing. I'm not pursuing the finances. I'm not pursuing all these other things. I'm pursuing him. Have faith in God. And here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse Verse five says, actually verse four says, in my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That's a whole nother message. Verse five says that your faith, 
that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I mean, but think about that. How often are we putting so much faith on the wisdom of men today? Whether it's climate change, whether it's politics. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting how many people put all their stock on what the media says. Well, the media said. <laughs> well, so-and-so said. How often do we live with that understanding to the point that it even brings about fear or emotions or, or hatred for other people and totally affects us? Why? Because we put our faith in the wisdom of men. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men. The word wisdom there, uh, wisdom of men means the philosophy of the world. It means the conceit that comes from man's ideas. One of the words is rhetoric. So we put our faith, people put their faith in man's rhetoric, just talking, talking, talking. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men but where in the what? The power of God. So just in these two scriptures, I can see that one, I have to have faith in God and I have to have faith in his ability. Jesus said, have faith in God. Paul says here that our, that our faith should not rest, should not rest in the wisdom of men, but what? In the power of God. So my faith needs to be in him and his ability alone. See, this is a person that's identifying as someone that's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. My faith is in him and my faith is in his ability. Right. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Go to 2 Timothy chapter one. Just, just keep your place there. I just want to quote these two scriptures. One's found in Titus 1, 4, and it says, I write to you about the common faith. Romans 12, 3 says, we've all been given the measure of faith. Throughout Jesus' life and ministry, as he walked the earth, he would label people's faith. He would call people, he'd say, he said, oh, that was great faith. He would label their faith exceedingly great faith. He would call people's faith small. He, he called people's faith weak and even said, you had faith none at all. Not at all. No faith. Now, it's not because Jesus was trying to judge necessarily our faith. He was wanting to reveal that there's different places of faith that you can be in. But yet we often understand we've all been given the measure of faith. And there's a common faith that we all have. The question is, what are you doing with the faith that you have? See, you have to, you have to look at faith, the measure of faith, as you would like lifting weights. See, there were some things that, that um, starting off in this journey, it was like, Lord, I, I, need, I need $5 to put, of gas to put in my car. But back then, I had a, a Honda that you could, you could fill up for $12. So at $5, you got a half a tank. Now I got an F-150 and I need $80 to fill up my tank of gas. You see, it's just, it's just a different level. And it's, and it's how we are in walking in our lives that, that our faith in God is 
grow. Our faith in God, we grow from what? Faith to faith. If you've already arrived at maximum faith, I'll sit down now and you can come up here and finish this message. <laughs> but this is something that we're always going to be challenged and growing in. Why? Because, because we live in this world and we have to deal with natural things and you're gonna be constantly bombarded by things that will try to move you over into this place of fear. But you have to, and I'm reminding us today that no matter what might happen into the world, no matter what happens in the year that we have an eclipse, <laughs> does it change God or change the word? The word? No, it doesn't. I mean, some of the things I've heard, oh, goodness. I'm not saying there's... There, <laughs> There's not some crazy things happening in the world. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I can't put my focus on those things. And my wife will tell, <laughs> she, she knows when I've been listening to some wrong things. <laughs> she, <laughs> so you need, you need the Holy Ghost wife sometimes to, to say, I could be transparent. Come on. I mean, there's another thing. People also send all sorts of stuff and it's like, you, you just take five seconds and, and do some research and it's like, that is not real. You just sent that out to 300 people and it was something that never happened. <laughs> well, um, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Um, we're talking about faith, right? Second Timothy, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So here, Timothy is going through some troubles here. He's dealing with the effects of the world affecting the church. That's affecting him. So first of all, Paul reminds him and he says, look, I'm reminded of your, your faith. I'm reminded of your faith, and he goes back, I'm reminded of your grandmother, and I'm reminded of your mother's faith. Eunice and Lois, there must have been some great moms and grandmas, right? And he says, but I want to remind you of this also. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands, for God has not given you, given us, a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear. You say, well, pastor, is there such thing as a spirit of faith? Oh, yes. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse four, Paul says, and we having the same spirit of faith. And we having the same spirit of faith. And so here he says, he says, God didn't give... You're operating in this fear, it didn't come from God. You're operating in this fear, it's not, from, it's not from God. So anytime you ask yourself and you're overtaken by fear, you have to ask, where did it come from? Go back to Hebrews 2, the fear of bondage. Trying to keep you, keeping your focus on the answer. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. I tell you, as a church, as believers, you know what we need right now? A sound mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. We, that means I'm not in confusion. That's right. If someone's in fear, then you don't have a sound mind. Yes. If you're in offense towards someone else, you're not. You don't have a sound mind. If you're arguing about things, then you don't have a sound mind. He didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. So what's the answer? How do we live this life of faith? You see, it's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. It's on how you see things. It's how you see the world around you 
compared to how do you see the word of God? This is a simple illustration, but I believe it makes a lot of sense. The closer you get to something, the bigger it becomes. The closer you get to something, the bigger it becomes. You see, if... Say, say if I'm going where Brenda is. Raise your hand, Brenda. And I'm going to where Brenda is. And yet, even though I can see her, I also see so many other things. I, I can see all sorts of things between me and her. And ultimately, as children of God, that's how we live our relationship with God. That God is there. I I, I see God. I know God's there. I know he exists. I I know he saved me. But yet, I have all these other things in between me and my promise. And so often we, we, we focus on the problems more than we focus on the promise. So often we focus more on the worry instead of our, our worship. So often we focus more on the panic than we do our praise. So often we focus more on the worry instead of focusing on the word. But you see, the closer that I get to Brenda, the bigger she becomes. But yet if I stop there, then all I see are still all these other things in between me and her. But when I get closer to Brenda, then all of a sudden I don't see any of these other people. So how close are you to God in this season? Because ultimately you're being weighed down by fear because you're seeing everything else bigger than the one who has the answer. You see, I can, I can be facing in this sea of troubles and I can have mountains in front of me and I can have all those things around me and I can even have the word. I can be holding the word and walking with the word and I can, and I can say, you know, I got a Bible. I got a Bible. Do you have a Bible? I got a Bible. My Bible it's a, the Bible tells me it's, my Bible is a sword. But yet if I don't pick it up, If I don't put this word into my spirit, if I don't put this word into my spirit, man, Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But for even I've seen this in my own personal life. I've gotten close to so many things, but this. But if you if we come to a place where all we can see is this. Then you know what? There was probably some attacks that the world experienced that you didn't even know took place. There was times that I would fast social media and, and, and fast news and, and different things like that. And somebody would say, did you hear about so-and-so? I'm like, I didn't hear. I didn't know we were in a re- recession. I didn't even know we were in a recession because I didn't look at the stock market. I didn't look at all the things that are going around. I'm not saying you, don't, you shouldn't be aware I'm just saying, but we should be more aware how close. Go to Psalms 27. You got, I can reinforce this with with just three three, uh, scripture references. Are you in a hurry today? Say, thank God for the word. Hallelujah. I walk by faith and not by sight. Let, let's say it with some, with some attitude. I walk by faith and not by sight. You know, I remember my, my dad, we, we didn't grow up what we would call word of faith. We grew up church of God. And, um, and I remember my, my dad, every Sunday morning before they go to church, he's, he would watch Frederick Casey Price. Oh, man. Pastors Crenshaw, Crenshaw Christian Center. Man, what an amazing man of God. Dr. Savell was just there celebrating um, his, his wife's birth, nine, was it 90th birthday or something like that? And um, man, and, uh, and I, I, can, I, I, rem- I, I could remember it even as a child. I, 
my dad would watch him while he's drinking his coffee, and I could, oh, oh his voice. I'm not going to try to mimic, mimic it, man. It was an amazing man of God. And walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. That's how we need I walk by faith and not by sight. But so often we walk by sight and not by faith. Hallelujah. I know this is simple this morning, but we got to come out and live different. Someone is going to be looking to you to be an anchor of faith in, the, in this world where things are happening. We need to be that anchor of faith. Man, if you're tossed to and fro with everything that's happened in the world, then no one can lean on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'll say that. You know what it talks about the kingdom of God? It says the kingdom of God is like a man would plant a seed in the ground, the smallest seed in the ground, and it would grow up and become a huge tree, and it said the birds of the air would come and find rest in it. The Bible says that faith is like a grain of mustard seed. See, you and I need to be that tree in the earth today. You and I need to be that tree, that, that tree, that seed, that mustard seed faith that was planted to grow up into a way where people can come and find strength in you because who you know and whose you are. Amen. Psalms 27. Let's look at the psalmist and how he dealt with fear. Psalms 27, verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. He's, he's declaring where his faith is. He goes, whom shall I fear? So because the Lord is my light and my salvation, why should I fear anyone? Why should you fear anyone when you know he's your light and your salvation? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh... You know what that word eat up means? It means to devour with oppression. When my enemy came to devour me, consume me because of oppression, he goes, my enemy and my foes, they stumble and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. My heart shall not fear. Man, so even if I've got an army surrounding me, the psalmist is saying, I shall not fear. Though, though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. This is real stuff. This is, this is real emotions that King David, don't look at this as just a natural story or, or don't look at it as just like a fable or a, a tall tale. No, this was something that really happened with King David. And he's saying, when I, well, I had an army surrounding me, Tommy. I had an army of thousands surrounding me. And this one thing is what I'm going to be confident in. This one thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. So when I have fear, I have armies coming on me, this one thing that I desire that I am going to seek after, and it is to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and to behold the beauty of the Lord. The Lord told me this years ago. He said, said, Justin, David, he goes, Justin said, God said to Justin, <laughs> David went in to seek one thing, but he saw many things. He goes, if I can just get into the presence of God, I can just get into God's presence. One thing have I desired, and that's what I'm gonna seek. It's in that. He said, I'll behold the beauty of the Lord, that he will see the Lord in a greater dimension. He'll see the Lord in a greater way. Maybe he'll be able to see greater things, greater things. Show him even how to get beyond the army, how to get over, how to be victorious over the enemy. Go to Psalms 34. Psalms 34. 
verse one. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul, that's your mind, will, and your emotion. See, you, you, you gotta tell your mind, will, and emotion what it's gonna do. My soul shall make its boast, meaning I'm gonna tell my mind what it's gonna do. It's gonna boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from what? Delivered me from what? So the closer he got to something, the bigger he saw God. Come magnify the Lord with me. To magnify something is to make it bigger. So we talk about magnify the Lord. We're not just talking about singing a worship song. Oh, let's magnify the Lord. Maybe we need to write a new song, Danny. Magnify the Lord. So it's not just declaring that, but it's actually doing that. Come magnify the Lord with me. Sometimes you just need to have a conversation with someone instead of talking about all the problems of the world. Let's just make God bigger. Yes. Amen. Oh, Vic, do you know how amazing he is? Yes. Woo. Someone comes into the conversation. Did you hear what so-and-so said? I can't believe so-and-so said. Do you believe that so-and-so said that? I don't know that, but I know this, that my God is bigger. My God is greater. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear all the, all the financial setbacks that are gonna take place? Well, but did you hear that my father owns a cattle on a thousand hills? Did you hear that I'm a seed of Abraham and, and that means I have the, I'm an heir according to the promise and so the same covenant that Abraham, I have? I'm blessed coming in, I'm blessed going out, I'm above only and I'm not beneath. Have you heard the good news today? That's magnifying the Lord. It's not just singing a song. It's actually doing it. Come magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we, we need to set up a time each day where we just start bragging on God. Let's just brag on God. Let's just brag on God. Let's brag on God. Someone calls you up. Can you believe so-and-so said that to me? Well, I know that might be disappointing, but hey, do you know this, that God is this, and God is that, and God can do that, and you know what? Hey, Jesus even forgave those that were beating him and spitting on him. Even Stephen, when he was stoned, he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Just change the subject and, yeah. and, 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 just, and just, just, throw, just throw a curveball and say, hey, let's just brag on God for a little bit. Let's just talk about our covenant a little bit. Let's just, let's, just, let's just just explore who he is. Let's just go to the word and let's look, at, look up every scripture that talks about his greatness. And let's, let's, just, let's just declare it to each other. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Come magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name together. I saw the Lord and he heard me and he, what, he delivered me from all my fears. Now get this. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. That means I can tell. <laughs> my wife can tell when I haven't been spending time with Jesus. I can tell when you haven't been, people around you can tell when you haven't been spending time with Jesus because this says that when you saw the Lord and he delivered, it said it shone on their faces. See, if you haven't come out of your worship time or prayer time, you probably haven't stayed there long enough. I mean, we want to, thank you, Father. Go to Romans 4. Man, someone speeds that clock up every week. Just. The very beginning in Hebrews, it said that 
when we read that, it talked about that he reached down to the seed of Abraham and lifted them up. And this chapter is all about Abraham standing for and believing for the promise of God. But through 20 years, not seeing a promise come to pass. Would you get discouraged? Some of you are like, well, bless God, I wouldn't. I'm a man of faith. I'm this world overcomer. I've got the faith of Abraham. I mean, you have to think about, you have to understand that we, that we are human. Abraham was human. And so here he's waiting for a promise to come to pass and it didn't come to pass. And along the way, there was an Ishmael. Has anyone here been guilty of an Ishmael? And what does an Ishmael come from? It comes from the fear that is not happening fast enough. The fear that maybe I didn't hear God. The fear that, God, how come something hasn't happened yet? How, God, God, why are you doing, God, why haven't you done something yet? God, how come you haven't changed that person yet? God, how come you're not doing this? God, how come you're not doing that? And that's where Abraham was, and it gave birth to Ishmael. But God showed up back to, to Abraham's life, changed his name to Abraham, and said, walk before me and be thou perfect. That means you got to stay close to me. So let's look, th- look at this. Sake of time, let's look at verse 19. It says, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Fear comes from what you're considering. He did not and not being weak in faith. He wasn't weak in faith, but yet we know he was at one point, but there came a place where he wasn't weak in faith and he didn't consider his own body. And he didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. Fear is a result of those things. What are you meditating on? What are you thinking about? Come on. Verse 20, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't waver. He wasn't back and forth. But what did he do? But was strengthened in what? Faith. Faith. He became stronger in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Wow. And he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. How do you cause your faith to grow stronger? Giving glory to him, magnifying the Lord. When Abraham wasn't sure what to do, he would give glory to the Lord. As he gave glory to the Lord, as he thought about the promise of God, what God said and and meditated on who God is and and what God had done for him, he had said he was fully persuaded. And I know what he was praising God about because that end of that verse said, said this, that he had promised he was also able to perform. What was he doing? He was praising God for God's ability. He was praising God for who he is. Our faith needs to be in him and our faith needs to be in his ability. And as he praised God, he was strengthened in faith. Hallelujah. How are we gonna grow in faith? Give him praise and glory to God. Giving praise and glory to God. And it says, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Let me close with this thought. How do I know when I'm in a place of faith, truly in a place of faith? It actually affects you on the inside. 
And this kind of goes back to what I said about prayer and worshiping. And there's times when I didn't stay there long enough. Why? Because when I got up or came out of my prayer time or word time, I still was thinking in fear. My mind is still being controlled by the what ifs, what's not, what could be. But how do I know when I've entered into that place where I'm actually God? I'm all in and I have, I'm in faith. Because it changes this. It changes on the inside. Look at Romans chapter 15. Romans 15. There's three things that this life of faith that you will constantly have as you're walking through life in this life of faith. Verse 13 says this, now may the God of hope, he is the God of hope. Now may the God of hope fill you. So this God of hope is gonna fill me with something. He's gonna fill me with joy in peace, in what? In believing. The fruit of faith is joy and peace. And joy and peace aren't natural emotions, they're spiritual. Meaning it doesn't take my circumstance having changed to have joy and peace. Joy is a force and peace is a force. So when, so, so when I'm in a place of believing, what happens is I'm filled with joy and peace in what? In believing. So in my believing, I'm filled with joy and peace. Meaning I'm, there's just this knowing down on the inside of me that, hey, everything's gonna be okay. It's, it's gonna be okay. There, I, I'm not sure how it's gonna work out. I don't know how it's gonna do, but I have this joy and this peace. And I'm telling you, the enemy didn't give me that peace and the joy can't, and the enemy didn't give me that joy. Jesus said, I give you this joy. The world did give it and the world can't take it away. Thank you, Lord. John 14, Jesus says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. So there is this element and aspect that we need to enter in and live with and it is this level of joy and peace in believing. Hallelujah. And then he says this, so I have this joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. I'm this joy and peace and I'm abounding in hope, meaning I'm coming out of my worship time, I'm coming out of my word time, I'm coming out of my prayer time that, hey, I've got an expectation, Brother Joe, that no one can take it from me. I have, I have conceived an image of the outcome. I spent time with him. This is what his word says. This is what he says in his word. This is, why, as I'm praising God, all of a sudden now I have this joy. Now my circumstance haven't changed, but I've changed. Come on. I'm established Come on. in faith. Yes. Not being moved. Why? Because I got joy and peace and I'm abounding with expectation because of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for your word today. And I thank you that you are building us up and you are growing us up quickly in this hour. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that this morning as a body of believers, we draw near to you and we get closer to you where there's things that have tried to come against us and attack us, maybe on the left hand or the right, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we just settle in and we draw close to you. Remind us, Lord, that as, as we're going through challenges and going through difficulties, Lord, that because of you, we have resili resilience and we are triumphant in this hour. Hallelujah, because we have a faith that is unshakable because it's established upon you and your ability. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give him a shout of praise if you receive that word today.